What's up guys, I'm Steven. And I'm Kylie. And if you're new to our channel, a little backstory about us. We started our first vacation rental about five years ago and then we blinked a few times and now we manage about 40 vacation rental properties. It didn't happen exactly like that, but it did happen unexpectedly. We never set out to be property managers, especially operating at the scale that we are now. If you wanna look back about nine months ago to our very, very first YouTube video, you can get a little more detail on our backstory and how we've grown our portfolio over the years. But to recap that quickly, we bought a duplex property in San Diego, not with the intention of having a bunch of Airbnb properties. And definitely not with the intention of managing for other people. We bought this duplex property because we wanted to live close to the beach. And at the time, the only way to afford real estate like that was to offset our mortgage with rental income. House hacking is a term that we're very familiar with now, but that wasn't the case back then. We really had no idea what we were doing, but we had a friend in San Diego that was doing something similar, renting out half of his house and so we thought hey let's just give it a try and see what happens oh well, we figured it out and we made some mistakes along the way but it wasn't too long before the neighbors around us were signing contracts for us to manage their property so if you aren't very familiar with mission beach this area in san diego it's super touristy right now about 30 percent of the housing market in that area is vacation rentals and it's been that way for decades and decades yeah so the houses on either side of us were also short-term rentals and we ended up starting to manage those along with our own and then through word of mouth and friends of friends, we started having people contact us to either start managing their existing rental for them or to help them try and locate a property for them to purchase and then set it up and then manage it for them. We didn't really know what we were doing at first, but kind of just tried to apply the same care and attention to detail that we had for our own property. And then things just kind of came together. So if you're wondering where we're going with all of this and not just telling our story again, as this YouTube channel of ours has grown a little bit, we are starting to get more messages from you guys via Instagram or email. And we do love getting those emails. They're so encouraging and we really like connecting with like-minded people. We got one last week from a guy named I don't think he wants us to say his name. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Well, a guy contacted us with a few questions. He's in the process of starting up a property management company of his own with a partner. And I thought that his questions were really good. And he just happened to catch me in a moment of content planning for this YouTube channel for over the next couple weeks. So I wrote back to him and basically said, if you can wait like a week for your answers, then I will turn all of these into a video. All right, so let's jump in. We'll check out this email. I haven't actually read it yet, but hopefully between the two of us, um, we can give some helpful advice. Okay, so he says, Kylie and Steven, I found your YouTube content and have been really impressed. Everyone watching right now should hit that like button and definitely subscribe. You said that, really? <laughs> no, I made the like and subscribe part out. Oh, well, but he likes our YouTube channel, that's cool. Then he compliments us a little bit more, thank you, thank you, and says, I'm hoping you can help me with a couple of questions. My business partner and I are launching our short-term rental property management business with a host ready to hand off a number of units to us. Do you recommend they add us as co-hosts or hosting teams on Airbnb? We're going to answer these questions from the perspective of how we operate our business. We know that there's other people that do this differently and that's fine. So the short answer to this question would be, we don't use either of those and the long answer is we consider our business to be a full service property management business, not a co-hosting business. And in our business model, owners can be as hands off as they want to be. We talk to most of our clients once a month uh, when we send monthly owner statements, but most of the time that's really it unless something major comes up at the house. And this business model is a bit different from the co-hosting model that's becoming more and more popular in the short-term rental space. Even though the term property management usually comes with a pretty bad connotation, we do consider ourselves property managers, not co-hosts. And even though we don't operate like a typical property management company might operate, one thing we do have in common is that we do own the listings when it comes to Airbnb or other booking platforms. So when we onboard a client, even if they have an existing rental property, we always create a new listing on our profile. And we do this for a couple reasons. The first is that when we started managing the pro tools section of Airbnb, wasn't as robust as it is now and you weren't able to simultaneously have any of your own listings and be a co-host on other listings without creating a separate account or email address and then like logging in and going back and forth. It was a pain. So creating that new listing on our profile really started out as a necessity, but Airbnb has done a lot of updates since then to make co-hosting a lot easier. Even still, we keep this practice. We don't like to be micromanaged is one of the most important reasons and 
when you have a co-host and an owner has access to all the messaging, the pricing, the calendar, you're opening yourself up pretty easily to being micromanaged by that owner. And then also this, this might make us sound a little bit jaded, but we've had relationships with clients go sour in the past. And so part of the reason we like to keep the listings on our profile is just to protect us, to protect our business and to protect our guests who made those bookings because we've had some, some clients kind of go off the deep end and we just never know what they would do if they had full access to everything. Another reason is brand and portfolio consistency. If you own the listing, then you own the photos, you own the listing copy, and you're able to kind of curate and create a nice consistent look and feel if someone checks out your whole portfolio. Having them all on one profile can also trigger people to look at your other properties if the one they had first looked at is unavailable for their dates or maybe they wanted something in a little lower price range you can help them direct them to that. If the owner was previously operating and wants to keep their listing, we remind them that they don't have to delete it. They just have to make it unlisted. And then we also remind them that they'll get a boost from the booking platforms by creating a new listing. And they also kind of benefit from this big portfolio that we have with good rankings. One thing that I do want to know on co-hosting versus property management is depending on what your state you're in, you might have to use a co-hosting model if you are not a licensed real estate agent. So in our case, you know, we do partner with a real estate broker, but we also are able to legally have a property management company for short-term vacation rentals in our state without having a license. But we're not lawyers. This is not legal advice, just listen. Okay, next question. How do you determine your onboarding fee for an existing listing? If the property needs smart locks or cameras and things like better pictures, is that included in your onboarding fee or is that extra? And do they buy them or do you and bill them after? So the short answer here is it really just depends on how involved and what the scope of work is gonna be for onboarding a property. If it's a new to market property and we're doing the full setup and furnishing and all that, that's always the easiest for us because we can generate a full scope of work work and we really have a good idea of what we're getting ourselves into for lack of a better phrase. If it's an existing listing, meaning it's been previously rented with, as a short-term rental with a different property manager, we also kind of go through a similar process as a new to market listing when we set pricing for onboarding. It's just more tailored to what we're going to have to do to get it ready. We always like to do a walkthrough of a property. We always before that, like to see photos of a property, just to understand what it is. But a walkthrough helps. And then after an owner is on board, signs a management agreement, we'll go through the house, do a full inventory. So we do linen and towel counts. We make sure that the linens and towels are all in good condition and that we have the correct quantities. We also do a full inventory of the kitchen. We can provide a free sample inventory, whole house of things that we like to include in a vacation rental. We'll leave a link to that here. In the description box. And then I look to see if we want to make any other improvements around the house, major or minor. So amenities, suggested design improvements, if any, and also organization. We'll also do a thorough maintenance inspection. Really check everything here. Appliances all function, pool equipment if you have it, HVAC smart thermostats, pretty much everything. We just go through the house from top to bottom. And then we take our list. Sometimes it's just a couple of items. Sometimes it's a couple of pages. And then we think about the time that that's going to require of us. And then we also take into consideration what other projects we have going on at the same time. If we're gonna be juggling a few things at once and we're gonna to have to bring in a handyman to help with some of the maintenance projects or whatever it is, then we'll make sure to factor in that price as well in our quote. Sometimes there's also like a strict time deadline or, you know, obviously most owners want to get things online as soon as possible, but maybe you're like working towards a big event. I'll give you an example. Last year we had a client who closed like six weeks before the music festivals out here and he wanted us to get it online in like a couple of weeks, but we had a lot of other stuff going on at the same time. So we charged a little bit more because we were gonna have to push aside some other things that we needed to get done to get his done, right? Yeah, time value of money. We have these scope of works that we send to the clients and sometimes a client will come back and say, I'll just take care of all these things ourselves. One thing that we haven't done in the past that we are going to start implementing is telling them in advance, that's fine, you can do those if you like wanna save money. But if we get to the house afterwards and you haven't actually completed those things, then we're still gonna be charging you for our setup efforts because we've had some instances where we get left with like a kind of halfway done to-do list and we still have to spend all that time to get it ready. Sometimes an owner's perspective, especially if they're inexperienced, is a little bit different about what it means to be done. Yeah. Like a big pile of trash in the garage or 
you know, unorganized kitchen cabinets. And it's all stuff that just like soaks up time when we have to come do it. So just something to keep in mind. So just to round this all out as a data point, the most we've charged for setup of a single family home was $12,000. Um, that was just our labor fee and it did not include any of the materials. You know, we build the owners for that. The least we've charged is zero dollars, but we will never do that again. I think the least these days that we'd ever touch an onboarding would be for a fee of like $700. And even then we feel like we're undervaluing our time. The problem, like Stephen mentioned before, is that a lot of times with these turnkey listings, you know, the client's definition of what's ready to go online is different than ours. Not always. We do have clients who have been spot on with their setups and we've made little to no changes, but that's not always the case. Kind of rare. And then to touch on the question about smart locks and cameras, um, these are things that we provide in our management fee or services uh, because it's a thing that we get a lot of value out of. You know, we've talked before in our smart home video about how we use them in our operations. So we provide those at no cost to the owner. Sometimes a property will already have smart locks and cameras. If they're easy to use or decent, we'll often just use those instead of taking them down and installing our own. Our preference is to use brands for locks and cameras that we you know, know, like, and trust and have experience with, and also to keep those brands as streamlined as possible so we're not logging into like a whole bunch of apps to look at cameras. Yeah, for example, like we've tried to standardize all of our locks to like one of two different brands if there's an issue, we're very familiar. We know exactly how to fix it quickly. If there are any other items that need to be purchased in onboarding, that was another question, then we put everything into a proposal and get client approval. And then typically we will purchase those items and invoice the client once the property is ready to go online. All right, time for a new question. What's the best way to convince an owner to make investments to improve their property slash listing? Maybe big investments like hot tubs or furniture, but also small stuff. Our script and how we respond to the owners has evolved over the last few years. When we first got started, our main points were brand consistency and guest satisfaction. And that's still true, but it's just been amplified over the years. So now it's that plus the need to stand out in a very competitive market. The little stuff and by that, most of the time that means things to improve the guest experience, hopefully are easy to convince an owner. If you get pushed back there, I'd proceed with caution. Probably means you're gonna get pushed back on any bigger ticket thing um, that might come now or down the road. But the, the general message for an owner is that anything you're recommending is an investment in their property to improve the guest experience, to improve the bookability. That all has a good return for them. It's not just some cost. So that's, that's something you, mentality shift you have to kind of convince people of especially maybe if someone has long-term rentals, you know, they're, they're like trying to minimize any money they put into a house. Vacation rental is different. You just kind of have to explain those differences to them and hopefully they buy in. Okay, next question. What types of improvements or investments are owners more likely to say yes to? And so kind of what I just mentioned, the basic thing is they'll invest in things that'll make them more money. One of the primary examples that gets overlooked sometimes is making sure there's enough linens and towels in the house. Yeah, because the counterpoint to this is that we won't be able to facilitate same day turnover, same day bookings, where one guest checks out, another guest checks in that day. If we don't have the correct amount of spares of linens and towels, the laundry situation, a lot of times, unless it's a really small property, just can't get done on the same day. So your point is, hey, we can either buy these things now, invest in these things now, that's the keyword to use, invest, and be able to get these same day bookings or we're gonna have to block a night after every guest and those block nights over the course of a year is going to add up to way more than you spent on those extra towels. Yeah, focus on how it benefits them and usually it's a pretty convincing story that you can tell. Not, not a story, I mean, it's true. <laughs> yeah, it is true, it is true. I mean, yeah, if, if you come at it with experience, you're recommending something, there's, there's a value to that that hopefully an owner appreciates. Not all do. <laughs> what has led you to say no to taking on potential clients in the past and would lead you to say no in the future? This is something that's easier said than done, especially if you're relatively new to property management and wanting to grow your portfolio. It's hard to say no, especially in the beginning. So we actually did a full video on red flags to look for for property management clients from our own experience what to look for and when to run quickly in the other direction. So we'll link that video on the screen at the end of this video. Next question, 
do you deal with STR licensing or is that the job of the owner? So I'm, I'm guessing that you mean, do we handle the process of applying for the license and renewing the license? Yeah, so we handle as much as we can. And most of the jurisdictions we operate in, permits or business licenses need to be in the name of the owner and we can't sign forms as the owner. So we'll sort of front load the process. Here's the form owner, fill it out, sign it, and we help as much as we can. One thing we absolutely do keep track of is when each permit is expiring, make yourself a Google calendar reminder with like 10 alarms set on it a month before your permit's going to expire so that you can then ping the owner and make sure that they're getting that process going. This is a good one. Do you still accelerate your Rivian faster than necessary every green light? He says his brother-in-law has one and it's incredible. Still driving it fast. Our two-year-old says, whoa, a lot <laughs> when we drive. And, and Nash likes it too, or our six-year-old, but I don't think adult passengers really care for my driving, but. I, I just wish you would tell me before you do it. I yeah. think that's Sometimes it's, it's, anticipation. it just goes and then you know, <laughs> snaps your head back. I will say though that like I said that I wouldn't ever accelerate that way, but it doesn't feel like, like it just happens without you even knowing it, so. It's a fast car. I guess that's the fun. answer is yes. We do. <laughs> You can't, so why not? <laughs> do you guys do any consulting for people like me who are just getting started and want to soak up all your knowledge? We do, but with very limited availability. Yeah, we're not trying to start a huge consulting business. We have a lot of other things going on and just don't have time for that. But we do set aside time in our week uh, to help people like you who might need some advice or, you know, something we can help with. Just getting started with short-term rentals or property management or whatever, Rivian ownership. <laughs> electric cars. We'll leave a link to our calendar in the description box below if you'd like to check it out and see if there is a slot on there that works for you. So, and anyone else watching who might be considering setting up a property management business, hopefully this helps. Hopefully you learned something from us. Leave us some comments below if you have more questions or comments on how you've done things. We always look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.